Don in London, hello, it's March the 28th, 2013. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. Addicted to, this is me, alcohol, trying to be perfect, not a good addiction, because you're never satisfied, because you never get there. So, addicted to people, places and things, right people, right places, right things having the right things, doing the right things, feeling right about myself and the only way that seemed to work in the end was with a drink inside me. And that was where it started. With a drink, life felt more joyful and convivial and wasn't sick, at least I don't think so, not, not very often anyway. And as the years went by, I didn't get hangovers either. I wonder now whether I was just topping up and there was always alcohol in my system. I don't know. I don't know what the truth of it is anymore it's so long ago but that's now I can't remember some things so I have to rely on the experience, strength and hope of other people in doing these videos that is, I learn and listen from others and share in a general way what recovery is like so I'm in recovery one day at a time I'm an, and I'm very grateful but it took professionals and a fellowship to get me here professionals to get me dry and say we can't support you 24-7 you need more than that that we can give which is once a week or once a month in the end because resources are scarce professional resources are very scarce so a fellowship of non-professional people Alcoholics Anonymous became the backbone and the foundation of my recovery and it remains one day at a time which is why I share experience, strength and hope one day at a time and have done for quite a while. But for how long, for how much more, I do not know. I haven't made up my mind yet. I'll see how I go. But anyway, AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, is the backbone of my recovery and I share how it works. I don't share about people personally because it would be wrong to do so. It's anonymity, which is sacrosanct, so we can find out the truth of who we are. AA is a confidential place, usually, to share what's going on. And hopefully, if needed, get some feedback. And the way it works, we join the fellowship, it doesn't cost anything, and we make our way as best we can. So not forgetting that we're all non-professional, including me, I'm not a professional I'm just another person sharing their emotional and spiritual journey so I, I talk about AA a lot but if you're in AA you know I don't speak for you I never can and I never will and I cannot be a spokesperson for AA because we have no leaders it's a democratic fellowship which is about unity, service and recovery so we're all equal inside it so there are no spokespersons for AA and we share our experience, strength and hope as we choose. That's the whole point. So we will hear many stories and in those many stories we'll hear, hear our own story about where we got to and what we could do about it. And that's how it works. One to one, in groups, wherever. It's non-professional. I have to emphasise that again. So what is AA? I share the AA preamble which is on this little card here so you understand where I'm coming from. Same principles apply just about and I hope it works for you that another person can help you find a d desire to stop drinking and then join in. Join in a fellowship where nobody absolutely nobody can tell you what to do but please behave as best you can is what I would suggest don't hurt other people so AA Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect. 
denomination, politics, organization or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So in there the key parts for me are a desire to stop drinking being the only reason to come along. It doesn't cost anything, but we are self-supporting, so if we have a few pennies to spare, not to cripple ourselves and not to put in any more than anybody else, we generally make ends meet. A bit like five loaves and two fishes, or two fishes and five loaves, which is quite important. It's Easter weekend coming up. So for a billion or two people, it's quite important. And uh, faith is a very good thing to have. Faith in whatever you believe in. And however you believe in is your choice. It remains your choice, your personal belief and opinion. So whilst the fellowship endorses nothing, and not me either, I have to say, it endorses nothing. A desire to stop, share experience, strength and hope, and be yourself, and find out who you want to be. Because a lot of us lost our identity, and some of us, like me, are only finding their identity on a daily basis. So I'm very pleased that I'm learning who I am today. I'm not a good plumber because I have a broken... It's not down to me to fix it, but the, there's a part of me which says I could take this whole thing, my shower room. It's not working properly. It's pump is blocked, obviously. And I want to take it to bits, but it's not my job. And if I were to tamper with it, which is what I want to do, I must not. Otherwise, the guarantees and the workmen will say, oh, it's down to you because you broke it. Now pay for it. But it's, it's tired. It's five years old and it needs some maintenance. So I have to be patient. It's a bit like recovery in a way. It won't all happen at once. And what seems impossible one day becomes possible possible the next. That's the beauty of recovery. And one of the things I've learned is patience. Not very well, because I still feel impatient about wanting to fix it myself. But I know I must not. Anyway, my, my feelings and thoughts this morning. So, March 28, 2013 nor ought AA membership ever depend on money or conformity. So it's not about money and it's not about conformity. Our non-conformist fellowship opens the door to anyone anywhere who has a desire to stop drinking. If there had been any issues of money or conformity, undoubtedly the fellowship would look a lot different and I would be dead because I wouldn't have been able to join in. I didn't want to be like everybody else. And then I discovered no one was like anyone else in recovery. Everyone is different, but we have this one similarity. So we look for the similarities and not the differences in what we hear. The longer we are in fellowship, well, some people call called old timers, to the old timer who is learning the wisdom of life, the openness of our fellowship becomes more obvious. The more open it is, the more people come in, the more we get wisdom of the world and we learn our emotional and spiritual journey and how we are living it. To the bleeding deacon, of which there are a number, bleeding deacons are people that get stuck somewhere, still stuck in old attitudes and old behaviours around manipulation and control and wanting it their way or no way. The openness of the fellowship makes them awkward, loud, complaining and bitter that things aren't the way they used to be. But also, we, I'm turning into a grumpy old man. I maybe have been a grumpy old man for some time, depending on how you view me. But uh, we can be grumpy sometimes. We can be good, bad and ugly all the time. It's just part of who we are. But there are a lot of people who think it ought to be a certain way in fellowship. And of course, we are non-conformist, anarchic and democratic. So we don't get our own way. We get a, a blend of what will work for most people going to that particular meeting or whatever. So we can be quite difficult customers on a, as, a, as an individual and as a group. And nothing stays the same forever because trusted servants, if they hold any position of 
uh, administration or just greeting at the door. It's only a year long. And if somebody doesn't like what they're doing, taking on a responsibility, they can resign immediately and without any prejudice because that's what they need to do. So nobody, but nobody is at the behest, they're at the behest of other people. We take on service if we want to. Now, I was looking online to find fellowship and recovery sites this morning. But this is, I, just had, I just had time to spare because I woke up at one o'clock and I couldn't get back to sleep. So I had a look for websites about recovery and what was going on. And there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. So I had to stop because I didn't know where to start. And it can be like that around here where I live. So I was looking online to find the fellowship and recovery websites. The number is overwhelming. At the same time, what I know, for me, face to face and in meetings, I still feel the power and the wisdom of experience, strength and hope shared in a meeting. It's like going anything which is a group event. We can be lifted emotionally by the group. So if we can get to meetings, it's good. I still feel the power and wisdom of the experience, strength and hope shared. And then it seems it is shared in many places over and over again, all over the place. It, the websites are chock-a-block. And then you wonder, which one to choose? Well, just have a look. Fellowship is working, and so are other means of recovery today. Without fellowship, it is doubtful if all these other means of recovery could even be contemplated, let alone available to many more who have never heard of Alcoholics Anonymous. So you'll find recovery websites which say, uh, we've got the answer to whatever it is you're trying to deal with. And they probably have got some of the principles of how to be sober or how to recover and find recovery in so many ways. And I don't mind that they haven't heard of Alcoholics Anonymous because if they're not an alcoholic, they don't need alcohol treatment, do they? The Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous has provided me with the backbone and the foundation of my recovery, without a doubt. Without a doubt, if it had not been suggested to me, where would I be? Oh, I know where I'd be, I'd be dead. With over 600 meetings in my locality, all different and all focused on a desire to stop drinking and share a message of experience, strength and hope, I have gratitude beyond measure. The literature, the big book of experience, AA big book, Experience, Strength and Hope, Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions, another book, As Bill Sees It, Reflections by one of the co-founders, Daily Reflections and lots more besides is utilised within fellowship and outside it. The Twelve Steps as Life Principles help me every day and the Twelve Traditions which focus on unity, service and recovery in the main keep meetings healthy today. A meeting is only as healthy as the people in it on any given day what you see is what you get and there is no quick fix this is the whole point of the fellowship there is no quick fix ever it's a daily thing it's not a daily grind it can feel like that at the beginning because we're doing something new and it's difficult and it makes us hot and bothered and social networks websites of all descriptions about recovery from so many different types of addiction will prevail for a good long time I feel and I hope they do and sharing a message of experience, strength and hope with one purpose, to help others and require no money or subscription in the main. Some of the principles of fellowship are obvious in the way people share their experience, strength and hope. And there is no personal gain in this. And there's no notoriety to be got. Nobody outside fellowship gives a damn, really, where we're coming from if we have something useful to say. And the most important part of that is we hear one story and we need to hear more stories because, not war stories, but more stories of recovery because the more we hear how other people are going about it, the better we have and the better opportunity we have to try different things out. Some of the principles of fellowship are obvious in the way people do share and there is no personal gain. And in my experience over the years, no one is out there trying to say they know better than anybody else about recovery, unless they're trying to get your money. It still takes many people sharing experience, strength and hope to help one person find recovery one day at a time. And I think it is true. 
you know, if we become self-reliant on one other person to provide us with sustenance, to keep us going, we become dependent on them in an unhelpful way. So no single message is enough, in my opinion. It still takes many people, many, to make the difference. And although social networks are really helpful in forming and sustaining recovery, in my case, in, an, in my experience, and just anecdotally, face-to-face, and in meetings will always be better if we can get there. Many, however, cannot get to a meeting or spend time face to face in the conventional sense. And so the principles of fellowship can be extended if we desire to communicate through whatever network to share the best we can. Our message of experience, strength and hope requires action in all respects so we can speak and equally important when it comes to recovery. We can listen and interact with our fellows. So, you know, all those hooked up, hooked up that's a better way of putting it, all those who you utilise Skype or Facebook or MySpace or Bebo or whatever it might be, or particular recovery websites like support groups, as Bill sees it. No, not as Bill, friends of Bill. All of these, so for soberface.com, the list goes on and on. Milton Mike is another good one. You know, on and on, so many different people, they're not just sharing their own experience, strength and hope, they're sharing about how other people do it as well. So, isolation is probably the worst ingredient in recovery. The more, the more we have isolation, the less helpful it is, because we have no reinforcement to keep on our sober path. I don't know what I do without people. That's me. In the UK, anyway, this is today. Um, well, all of this is written today. Cold Arctic winds are blowing from the east across the UK today. Now, I've got a bit of sunshine this morning, which I'm, for which I'm very grateful. And it was uh, dawn was about 5 a.m., but we've put in, putting the clocks back to summertime, or whatever it is we're at. So it'll be a bit darker in the morning and a bit lighter in the evening. But the cold winds are blowing from the east across the UK. Polar. Ah. And the weather is not good for those who cannot get out so easily. Like me. So I'm grateful for social networks and the ways to connect with fellow members of AA. And of course I can write a letter or an email, talk on the telephone and invite people around. I still prefer meetings, of course, because I've learned so much from listening, shared what I've heard, and can keep on doing this as the weather improves. Recovery is still a haphazard process, and it would be unhelpful to promote a fix. It is haphazard because we're non-professional, and if we don't talk to each other, we don't get the wisdom of the years, or the moments, even. as a process and it would be hel unhelpful to promote a fix so no website will fix you it's the action we take sharing and interacting action 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 and we can do this but we have to do it gradually sometimes we're so shut in by the end of our drinking we just don't know we can't even walk or we're in hospital or we've been shoved into a place of insanity we share wherever we are, in a meeting, in a home, via the social network. It is still a personal and non-professional message. We are not professional in fellowship. We are simply human, human beings. We share our emotional and spiritual experience one day at a time. And the emotional and spiritual experience is what it's all about. Knowing our feelings in the moment of now. And really, really experiencing life in the moment of now. Reality and how to cope with it. And if we cannot cope with it, ask for help. That's where fellowship really began. Two people talking to whoops, two people talking to one another rather than going to a, an alcohol establishment. That's how it started. Two alcoholics together having a tough time. Anonymity. <clears throat> And anonymity, the sanctuary to find out how to be sober, to share with a sense of security and confidentiality is so important. No matter what, the principle of an anonymity is as good as those who will keep it, what they hear on a specific basis, and to themselves. 
what we hear on a specific basis needs to be kept well the thing is you've, as soon as you've heard it in a meeting it, as you go along it's not what we hear it's the message we hear but when we're new and this is important and we are aware that gossip kills it does it kills or it just shuts people down no matter what the principle of anonymity is as good as those who will keep it if one alcoholic undermines and disrespects another alcoholic and their anonymity the breach of trust is often found out through gossip when others breach our trust as a newcomer the damage done can be the worst calamity because it shuts a person off there are things I have shared which have, this is me personally I have shared which have come back as gossip and the problem with gossip is whatever I shared to start with now has become something bigger and usually more horrible than ever was it's a bit like Chinese whispers uh, a bag of chips for two and six becomes he's had sex with 16 people for half a crown but of course it anyway, you know what I mean it gets distorted so gossip kills these days and because of the fellowship I've developed a more open way of life so for me I was never I was never anonymous with friends or family they knew I had a problem and I was struggling and I didn't disclose it to them it was obvious but if it, if it wasn't obvious there was one member of my family who made it very clear that I had a problem and that was my mother and she did it out of concern and worry she was worried I was killing myself because I was and I was very cavalier about it I couldn't care less because pride ego and fear made me put on this poker face and pretend everything was all right even when it wasn't and I was hiding hiding away and then I ran away so but these days anonymity was never really that it was not a big issue to me but it is a big issue because people need their confidentiality you need your confidentiality and it's up to you what you share not me certainly not me so I don't feel self prejudice or any humiliation this is me I don't feel any humiliation about being an alcoholic this is not the case for many in recovery and respecting anonymity feels right and sacrosanct today I don't feel there needs to be a, a leader in fellowship this is just me personally there are no leaders in AA and I'm certainly not one of them we're, we're all rank and file we work under the banner of unity service and recovery so even if someone is a trusted servant in some way they still have no more rights than anybody else and if anybody's upset we just call a group conscience and we work it out as best we can knowing full well that anyone in a so-called position of any sort of power cannot be there forever and if we don't like what they're doing as a group we can say look you're not doing what we do what we want you're not being a trusted servant you're trying to bend this group and meeting to the way you see fit and that's being a bleeding deacon and not not an old timer we can all do these things because we get a bee in our bonnet but it is an, uh, this is the point that I do not feel self prejudice or any humiliation be, at being an alcoholic this is not the case for many in recovery and respecting anonymity feels right and sacrosanct I don't feel there needs to be a leader in a fellowship and certainly no spokespersons speaking on behalf of anyone we can share how it works and why it works and we can share our personal journey if we wish to and always for me always respectful of the anonymity of my friends and fellows and being respectful in our non-conformist and anarchic democratic fellowship today and the only thing you have to be part of it is a desire or need a desire to stop drinking or a desire to find out how to stop drinking is good enough to be coming to meetings and nobody can chuck you out uh, because we're not like that and even the most disruptive person we try to accommodate as best we can because people are upset at the beginning who the hell wants to be going to a meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous? me because I've been doing it for so many years and I enjoy the company of the people there and so do my friends and fellows 
we keep on going back simply because it's fun in the end yes and also because we want to resolve problems and issues which we face on a daily basis so no two meetings are ever, ever going to be the same what you see is what you get today good bad or ugly there are good meetings where we get a, a feeling of well-being there are bad meetings where we get no feeling of well-being but we know what we don't want in the future we don't want to be like that so we learn even from the worst and ugliest of meetings the good bad and ugly of how we are doing as people one day at a time what you see is what you get non-professional nobody's telling you what to do God, if it had been any different if it hadn't been an anarchic democracy and even though I've done service positions of one sort or another over the years they have no power in them ultimately thank God they don't and of course the issue of God which I've been talking about this month whatever your higher power is whether it's truth, love and wisdom learned in the moment of now which is how it works for me the higher truth, not my personal I think it, this is the truth I ask people, is this how you see it? and often they don't see it the same way as me it's a bit like me in my, my shower room I know if I got my tools out and took it to bits I could sol solve the problem but it's uh, it's a system which is watertight it requires professionals to fix it and even though I could bodge it or even professionally do it I don't know that I have the stamina the inclination even though I'm impatient to do something like that and it's not my job so what's that got to do with this well it's to do with tolerance patience knowing what I can do and what I cannot do can do today cannot do today wisdom to know the difference if the weather holds like this I can get out with help with the assistance of some power to a meeting if it doesn't stay like this I shan't be going out so I shall be haunting Facebook or somewhere else just to have some connection some human connection with other people today that's how it works we share experience, strength and hope we learn what we can and cannot do and the wisdom to know the difference and we learn to be sober one day at a time and then life makes more sense it does take time anonymity is sacrosanct to me I don't see it quite as the spiritual foundation of life but it is the spiritual foundation of the fellowship and we are allowed to be non-conformist in all of this so we won't hold true to everything that we are told or suggested by what is written because what is written was written decades ago but in principle all these things are quite timeless so generally and in the majority of what is going on fellowship rocks and if anybody's telling you what to do in fellowship you are allowed to tell them where to go but I would do it politely rather than how I have done in the past where they've made me angry because I'm still human uh, emotional and spiritual means all your feelings work in the moment of now and it's then what to do about it it's what happens to our temperament over time so we will still get angry, rageful about some things because we're human and there are indignities and injustice all around us and the, I think it's um, the, is it the Supreme Court in the USA trying to work out what is marriage and why is it that there is a prejudice not tolerance and love there's a prejudice against a lot of people in the biggest country of democracy so you know when you work it out though the biggest democracy of this kind has made monumental strides forwards over the last 50 years beyond belief and faster than a lot of other countries which is why they get so upset with other countries I guess and in England we're going backwards anyway that's just the way we are at the moment we've got a government who doesn't know what to do financially and is constrained relying on a Canadian to come over and make it better and let go of it but they won't let go of it because they keep on doing daft things like trying to 
deport people to a country where they won't get a democratic or just hearing about their crimes and they've done enough damage here by all of this I don't know what to say about it but if you start making exceptions to the law oh, well I'm treading on the toes of everybody now time for me to shut up come back to what I really know works meetings work sharing, interacting however you can, wherever you are about recovery is not a bad thing as long as you say this is not the way I can fix you because I can't I can't fix you I can't even fix me it's about living the truth of now and you can't fix the truth you can just learn it and it's not my truth it's the universal truth so stick to your opinions and beliefs if you please I would rather you did that anyway prayer meditation all about step 3 and step 11 relinquishing self will to get our independence back is an amazing thing letting go being right and opening the door to listening to the universe and that is prayer meditation and asking for help with humility having tolerance and love for people yes which means you've got to have tolerance and love for yourself and be able to change so I'm, I'm changing every day I'm getting older amongst other things happily the serenity prayer to God or in good conscience God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference it can happen in the moment minute hour and all day long just for one day